Before we begin, the brain is a very complex organ. It isn't very well understood, even in humans. While I am working off a large list of sources, information is always being updated. What I'm about to present is the truth as of the release of this video. Information always changes, and it is important that we are always researching to remain as updated as possible. This is a topic that is very hotly debated. Some claim their animals understand their every emotion. Others believe their dragon loves them back. Claims have been made that bearded dragons have a problem-solving intelligence on par with dogs. Others claim that they are essentially vegetables with no intelligence at all. This is perhaps the most varied topic out there. There is such a wide variety of beliefs. Truly, everyone has a different opinion. Let's take a deep dive into the science behind it all. For this video, I am mostly going to be focusing on central bearded dragons, Pagona viticeps. I believe that it is safe to assume that intelligence doesn't vary significantly between species of the same family, however I could be wrong. We need to begin by first breaking down the definition of intelligence. In this video, I'm going to use the Wikipedia definition. It reads as follows. The ability to perceive or infer information and to retain it as knowledge to be applied towards adaptive behaviours within an environment or context. Bit of a mouthful, really. Essentially, you're taking a piece of information, storing it as knowledge, and then using it to adapt to your surroundings. Three aspects, all of which need to be ticked off to demonstrate intelligence. Another important thing to note, the concept of instinct. Defined by Meridian Webster as, and I quote, largely inheritable and unalterable tendency of an organism to make a complex and specific response to environmental stimuli without involving reason. Again, extremely wordy. Essentially, something in the animal's DNA, something that cannot be changed, that enables it to respond to its environment. That's the major difference between the two. One exists before birth, the other is acquired after birth. There are two different words, and it's important to make a distinction. There are lots of different types of intelligence too, just to complicate things further. Social intelligence describes the ability to understand emotion and communicate complex ideas with others, something commonly associated with elephants. Problem-solving intelligence describes the ability to solve complex problems. Corvids, such as crows and ravens, are well known for this ability. The ability to use tools, the ability to perceive danger, the ability to learn. All types of intelligence. Things that the organism has learnt and not inherited. Let's actually start talking about bearded dragons for a minute. Central bearded dragons live in remote, arid Australia, with a vast range stretching sandy deserts, coastal fringes and dry grasslands. They are semi-arboreal, however also dig burrows. They are generalist hunters and simply eat whatever happens across their path. What kind of selective pressures are there to warrant the development of intelligence? Why did natural selection choose intelligence? Intelligence is thought of as the pinnacle of evolution, the reason for the success of humans and other primates. However, even organisms as simple as reptiles possess it. Being able to pick up information about your environment and use it to your advantage is extremely useful. As one journal puts it, the more behaviour that can be acquired rapidly through simple associative learning, the faster the animal can get on with finding a mate and reproducing. And in bearded dragons specifically, they don't have a long time. They become sexually mature at about a year old, they are strong enough to fight and win a female by their second year, and usually die by predation in their third or fourth year. Yes, predation. Have you seen a parenti run? So we can safely assume that bearded dragons have the ability to learn through association. They have intelligence, like most organisms do. It's not very special. However, they do go further. There is a type of intelligence known as social imitation, essentially copying someone else's homework. Believe it or not, we used to think this was kind of a hard thing to do. You have to observe another, make inferences, learn the constraints of the situation, the process and the end goal. Turns out, birds, mammals and reptiles can all do it, as well as humans. Animals have a much higher intelligence than we tend to give them credit for. One study found that central bearded dragons do indeed copy each other. A demonstrator reptile was taught how to open a wire door to receive a food reward. All dragons who watched her perform the task learned to successfully imitate her, 
while those who did not witness her couldn't open the door. All of the lizards who opened the door also opened it from the same side as the demonstrator lizard. Pretty cool if I do say so myself. There are some other fun things about beta dragon intelligence. Several studies have linked incubation temperatures to intelligence levels. Those incubated at slightly warmer temperatures were able to find shelter through discriminative learning quicker than those incubated at cooler temperatures. It also shows that they might be able to exhibit flexible learning, the ability to apply knowledge from one situation to a different situation, better than those incubated at cooler temperatures. Those incubated at slightly lower temperatures, however, tend to be faster runners. The level of intelligence is not set. It can change with something as simple as incubation temperatures. But you read the title. You want to know if your bearded dragon really loves you. That sweet little face, surely there's emotion deep down inside. Well, the answer, it is very, very highly unlikely. But there is no proof one way or the other. Now here's the long answer. Cognitive appraisal describes the ability to assign value to an object. I can say that I love a good chalky Tim Tam, but I hate white chalk Tim Tams. I have just assigned a value to that object. Not every animal can do it. I'm forming a unique opinion based on the information I have gathered from my surroundings. This ability would allow your bearded dragon to assign a value to you, a non-bearded dragon entity. There is no evidence that bearded dragons possess cognitive appraisal, so they can't assign a value to you. It also wouldn't make sense, as there is no need for such a bias in nature. They have no need in the wild to assign value to objects. It is also extremely unlikely for your dragon to see you as another dragon and thus form a friendship. They rely on multiple senses as well as sight, and unfortunately, you look, sound, smell, feel, taste, and act nothing like another bearded dragon. They don't form friendships. Your bearded dragon isn't physically capable of loving you in the traditional sense. However, I do believe that your bearded dragon does still recognize you on your unique biomarkers, for example, your smell, your taste, etc. You still need to earn their trust. They learn through association that you are not a threat. They don't, however, love you back. However, your reptile is capable of experiencing some emotions. In particular, stress. I am not going to go into that because it really deserves its own video. There is way too much information to go into this video currently. However, I will go over some basics for bearded dragons specifically. Elevated blood glucose levels, that's the sugar in your blood, in central bearded dragons are said to be indicators of stress. However, there are, more, there are also more visual indicators. Darkened coloration is probably the most obvious one. Your bearded dragon is also likely to experience anxiety, distress, excitement, fear and frustration like most other species of reptile. These are all backed by multiple peer-reviewed papers across multiple different species. Pleasure, however, different from love, is another possible emotion experienced by some species. There's only a few sources that ever list it, so take this with a grain of salt. One study tested flavour aversion by adding a foul taste in the form of lithium chloride to some food items. The reptiles all avoided the lithium chloride tainted food, showing that they experience sensory pleasure from environmental stimulus. But alas, there is no other evidence, so take it with a pinch of salt. However, I think the major thing that we can take away from this has nothing to do with whether our bitter dragons love us or not. It's that we aren't treating reptiles the way they deserve. One 2014 study of a major wildlife distributor in America found that 80% of stock was significantly ill, injured, or just dead. This facility discarded over 3,500 dead invertebrates, amphibians, reptiles, and mammals each week. The mortality rate for reptiles alone in this facility was 42%. Nearly half of all reptiles that entered the facility died. 
These animals are almost certainly experiencing pain, anxiety, distress and fear. Causes of death included cannibalism, crushing, dehydration, emaciation, hypothermic stress, infection, parasite infestation, starvation, overcrowding, stress and injuries, euthanasia on compassionate grounds, and undetermined causes. Is this really how we treat animals capable of experiencing a number of different emotional states? They may not love us back, but does this give us the right to treat them like this? Large wildlife wholesalers supply animals to chain pet stores such as Petco and PetSmart. If you have purchased your animal from Petco and PetSmart, you are supporting these, in these industries. However, it also occurs in Australia. In Victoria, almost half of reptile owners do not meet the code of practice on reptile enclosure size. A vast majority of owners appeared to underestimate the cost of owning a reptile in the first place. In New South Wales, an alarming trend is showing that a number of animals being rehomed through the balance system is increasing at a rapid rate. 1,000 reptiles were rehomed in a three-year period through the ballot system alone. I then did a rough estimate on the number of animals rehomed privately. In one day, I counted three on Gumtree, two on Reptile Classifieds, two on Reptiles Down Under, and 12 on Facebook. And those were only the groups that I was a part of. Times that by 365 and you get nearly 4,000 per year. It's as if we aren't taking reptiles seriously. If anything, I want this video to show that reptiles have the ability to suffer and suffer greatly at the hands of those who are uneducated. These aren't children's toys or a passing fad, but an intelligent creature who deserves as much respect as your eye. Do your research and understand the commitment before purchasing your reptile. They really do suffer, both physically and emotionally, in uneducated hands. You are solely responsible for the welfare of that creature. So take that responsibility seriously. Hello everyone, welcome to my new YouTube channel. Um, so fully aware that I can't edit a video that's that's fixed. I have now worked out how to do the aspect ratio, so it should look better next time. Um, so you'll see the sources listed on the screen. I think I've put everything there. I might not have put everything there. So if you find something that I haven't, um, that you can't find in the sources, just comment down below and I'll look it up for you. Um, as for questions, leave them below. I'll try to get back to as many as I can, but if there's a lot, I'll make a follow-up video answering all the questions or the most commonly asked questions because I doubt I've covered everything in this video. Um, yeah, that's about it. Have a nice day.